When the sea is a big blue ball with you in the middle of it and you're desperate for anything that might look like land, you might thank your lucky stars that you've sighted what looks like a mound of blessed earth rising out of the waves. Clinging to your sodden plank or limp and weak at the bottom of your lifeboat, you would cry salty tears of joy that you were saved. But what if the beach you stumbled upon was worse than anything you could have imagined? What if it promised not safety, but only a different death? You might as well get back in that water. There's nothing here that'll save you. Before we get started, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more such amazing content. Here we go. Number 12. Vulcan Point If there's an analogy to compare this island with, it would be the movie Inception. Vulcan Point in the Philippines is truly one of a kind. So what's so special about it? Oh, this island is in the middle of a lake, in the middle of a volcano, in the middle of a bigger lake, in the middle of a bigger island, in an archipelago in the Pacific Ocean. Just try picturing that. Vulcan Point is surrounded by a lake within the Tal Volcano, which is Philippines' second most active volcano, and this volcano is within a larger lake called Lake Tal within the island of Luzon. If you're to visit Vulcan Point now, you'd be surprised to see the lake within the volcanic crater has mysteriously vanished. On January 12, 2020, the Tal volcano erupted, causing all the crater to be laden with volcanic debris. The intense heat from the eruption caused the entire lake to dry up as a result. But no need to worry, Vulcan Point somehow managed to survive the entire ordeal. Experts say that Vulcan Point should return to its former glory with a surrounding lake after it gets refilled by rainfall in the coming years. Best to plan your trip then. Number 11. Vosrosdenia Island Imagine an American-centric worst nightmare portrayal of the peak of the Cold War. It probably looks a little like hazard-suited Soviets tinkering with terrifying diseases we thought were long extinct. And that probably looks a lot like Vosrosdenia Island just a few decades ago. In 1948, the Soviets opened up a tiny laboratory on the island in the Aral Sea. Before the Aral Sea began to disappear, top-secret work was conducted by teams of scientists researching the weaponization of some of the most deadly diseases humankind has ever known. Over the next 40 years, the Soviets conducted open-air tests on smallpox, anthrax, and the bubonic plague on the island, hoping its isolation would keep the deadly illnesses from escaping. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the island facility was abandoned, and the remnants of the weaponized diseases were buried quickly. As the island slowly became desert and the sea slowly disappeared due to Soviet irrigation projects, the once isolated island became a part of the mainland. Over concerns that deadly pathogens could still be alive on the island, a team of Russians went to the once active facility site to decontaminate the land. According to their report in 2001, everything was clear. However, a conflicting report in 2005 showed that there were still remnants of the facility, including test tubes for conducting experiments on animals, which preserved the chance of deadly diseases such as anthrax still being present in the area. Number 10. Guyola Island who wouldn't want to live on their own private island? The Guyola Island off the coast of Naples seems like the perfect real estate for such a dream. What's more, it comes with its own mansion. The two tiny islands are interconnected by a tiny bridge, which looks cool more than being practical, but this island isn't on the list for its picturesque location. The Guyola Island hides a dark history behind its faded walls. Since the turn of the 20th century, the island has seen various owners trying to call it home, but ended up dead. One of its earliest owners, a Swiss man named Hans Brown, was found murdered and wrapped up in a rug. His wife, too, met a cruel fate by drowning in the sea surrounding the island. Another owner, a German man named Otto Grunbach, was found dead from a heart attack while on the island. This trail of mysterious deaths and ill fortune continued till 1978, and the island has since been left abandoned. This is one island which clearly doesn't want anything to do with anyone. Number 9. North Sentinel Island Andaman Islands The Andaman Islands sit at the far side of the Bay of Bengal in the Indian Ocean. Something of a tropical ideal, this chain of 300 islands is home to tropical rainforests fringed with palm-lined white sand beaches and coral reefs. Their isolated location puts them somewhat off the beaten track, and this is even more the case for some of the more remote islands. North Sentinel Island is one of these remote islands and has virtually escaped the modern world. But this island, which is about the size of Manhattan, is not uninhabited. It's home to the Sentinelese tribe, possibly the most isolated and most dangerous tribe on Earth. Very little is known about the Sentinelese, including how many there are. Estimates vary from between 15 and 500. What is known as their way of life appears to have changed little since the Stone Age, and they don't like visitors. 
Various attempts at contact with the tribe have been made over the years, but nearly all have ended in a hail of arrows being fired at the visitors. Of course, there are plenty of other beautiful beaches to be found in the Andaman Islands, which won't result in a high chance of death, but very few can claim to be this unspoiled. Number 8. Paveglia Island, Italy If there's one place which could satisfy most paranormal hunters, it might be the Paveglia Island in Italy. Located just half a mile from Venice, this long-abandoned island has a dark past. From 1776 and for more than a century, the island was used as a quarantine zone for those inflicted with plague and other infectious diseases. It's said that more than 100,000 sick people have died here in its heyday and were buried in mass graves. Then, in 1922, a mental hospital was constructed on the island, but its history was marred with reports of patients being abused and unexplained disappearances. The hospital shut down in 1968, and the island has since been abandoned and fell into disrepair. Due to the troubled history of Paveglia, it has been a source of various paranormal sightings over the years and has been featured on several shows. Though it's illegal to go onto the island these days, people still sneak in for the thrill. Are you bold enough to go there? Number 7. Tiburon Island Tiburon Island is the largest island in Mexico. It's hot, barren, filled with venomous animals, and home to a group of people called the Seri, who've long been labelled as cannibals. It's also long been reputed to contain untold riches and precious metals. Arizona prospector Tom Grindle made his first trip to the island in 1903. At the time, he only skirted the edges to see if it was worth mounting a full-scale prospecting operation on the island. Deciding it was, he returned to Arizona to recruit men to help him. In the end, he was only joined by three others when he left in 1905. Traveling light, with materials to make a distillery, knowing that fresh water was going to be their scarcest commodity, they finally set off on June 10th, promising to be back by the end of July. They never returned. Grindle's brother Edward followed in September to find out what had happened to the party. When he came to the town the ill-fated prospecting party had left from, he received word from a small group of hunters that a group of Americans had been killed on the island. All that remained of them were their hands strapped to tall stakes in the center of dance rings. The Seri were known to tie their captives to stakes of driftwood, cutting them apart little by little, eating the pieces and watching them die. The remains of Tom Grindle were found two years later, nothing more than a pile of bones identified by the handwritten letters that lay nearby. Half a century later, a friendlier expedition was sent to the island with the goal of getting to know these supposedly ferocious people. Visitors found a kind and courteous tribe who was eager to share their way of life with visitors they thought not threatening. When asked whether or not the rumors of cannibalism were true, the response was, well, we like the flavor better than most game. They went on to clarify that the Mexican government had placed restrictions on their cannibalistic activity, threatening them with death should any more island visitors mysteriously disappear. Number 6. Ela de las Municas The chances of you being shipwrecked in the canals of Xochimilco, south of Mexico City, are slim, but anything can happen. Just look at politics. Anyway, let's assume that happens. Perhaps you're intoxicated and flail your way to a small island that seems to offer you at least a chance to breathe. You look up and realize there are dolls everywhere. Old dolls. Dolls' limbless torsos dripping from trees. Dolls' heads on sticks, empty eye sockets staring. Why are the dolls there? Well, the sad story is that the caretaker of the island, Don Julian Santana Barrera, found a drowned little girl floating in the canal. He was unable to save her and was deeply upset. To honor her, he hung a doll that he found floating nearby on a tree. He hung more and more dolls to appease the spirit of the girl which he believed to be haunting him. Half a century later, Barrera was found drowned the same place that he found the girl. You would probably be safe staying on Isla de las Monacas. That is, presuming that the dolls don't really whisper to you, watch you, and drive you mad, as legend has it. Number 5. Comoros With a population of about 700,000, the Union of the Comoros is located in the Mozambique Channel off of Africa's east coast. Few people visit Comoros because the islands are said to be infected with malaria-carrying mosquitoes. A lot of people there wear masks, and all water should be regarded as being potentially contaminated, according to the World Travel Guide. Water used for drinking, brushing teeth, or making ice should have been first boiled or otherwise sterilized. Milk is unpasteurized and also needs to be boiled. Hepatitis E is widespread, and Hepatitis B is hyperendemic. Number 4. Runit Island Here's an island which you most definitely shouldn't visit. 
During the Cold War, the United States tested over 50 atomic and hydrogen bombs on the Bikini and Eniwetak atolls of the Marshall Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Since the countless testing left behind tons of nuclear waste, there was a need for a hardy nuclear dumping site which could contain these highly radioactive substances. As a result, the Runit Dome on the Runit Island was built to entomb 90,000 cubic meters of radioactive material, including some plutonium-239. In recent years, however, there has been growing concern about the dome cracking due to deterioration of the structure and possibly leaking the radioactive contents into the soil and the surrounding area. Once it gets into the water, its impact could be catastrophic, reaching faraway shores and even poisoning sea life. The US Department of Energy has asked Congress to assess the situation of the structure and push for repair efforts. Until then, the Runnet Island is in a precarious situation and could possibly be one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Number 3. The Chase Vault, Barbados in 1808, the sad death of baby Mary Chase marked the start of the legend surrounding the Chase family tomb in sunny Barbados. The tiny baby's body was placed in a metal coffin in the vault. A mere four years later, the family suffered another loss when young Dorcas Chase committed suicide by starvation. A month later, the father of the two girls, Colonel Chase, died as well. As a couple of pallbearers carried the Colonel's coffin into the crypt, they noticed something strange. Mary's coffin was standing upright in a corner. Thinking that somebody had broken into the tomb, the men returned the casket to its rightful place and made sure the tomb was securely locked. No one thought any more of the incident until four years later, when the crypt was opened for another funeral and the mourners were shocked to find that none of the coffins were in their original places. Three years later, the crypt was opened again, revealing that the coffins had been thrown about violently. In 1820, the crypt was opened for the last time, revealing the coffin of Colonel Chase leaning against the door and the others haphazardly strewn about. The sand on the floor was undisturbed. The coffins were then removed from the crypt and reburied in other parts of the cemetery. Since then, it's been speculated that flood water might have risen up through the limestone floor, causing the coffins to float around until the waters receded. Since the theory cannot be formally proven, the moving coffins remain a mystery. Number 2. Ramri Island, Myanmar Imagine you're part of a military force outflanked by the enemy on a tropical island and the only way is to face the enemy troops closing in on you or to traverse a thick swamp filled with deadly crocodiles. Do you risk your life in the swamp or put your life in the hands of the enemy? This very situation happened to Japanese troops occupying Ramri Island in the Bay of Bengal during World War II in early 1945. Following fighting between British and Japanese troops, an estimated 400 Japanese soldiers were forced to flee into the marshes that were ruled by some of the world's largest saltwater crocodiles. Those who chose the doomed route across the crocodile-infested waters and luckily survived are reported to have told horrific tales of dozens of crocodiles attacking the soldiers en masse and appearing out of seemingly nowhere to drag off some poor soul. This incident is now in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most number of fatalities in a crocodile attack. Yikes! Sounds like we're definitely better off leaving Ramri to the crocs. Number 1. Hawaii Hawaii is oftentimes referred to as paradise on Earth, and I wonder why each year about 7 million people from all over the world come to the islands just to enjoy the sun, the beaches, the rainforests, and the mountains. But what if we tell you that without volcanoes there would be no Hawaii? And at the same time, these volcanic eruptions are responsible for killing 280,000 people since 1500 in the Hawaii region. Strange, isn't it? And what's more strange is recently, geologists have revealed Hawaii's Puhahonu to be the largest and hottest shield volcano on Earth, twice the size of nearby Mauna Loa, which now bears the title of the second largest active volcano in the world. It last erupted in 1984, spouting down lava in its eastern flank for 22 days. In 2018, Hawaii's Kilauea volcano made global headlines as it embarked on a months-long eruption. The lava spewed more than 100 feet in the air and flowed like water, forming deadly rivers that inundated local communities and cost millions of dollars in damages and lost tourism. The fiery rampage earned Kalauea the top slot in the U.S. Geological Survey's 2018 rankings of the most dangerous volcanoes in the U.S. There you have it, 12 most dangerous islands. Would you want to visit any of them? Let us know in the comments. For more similar content, be sure to hit the like button, share, and subscribe. See ya!